Uh, before we start this episode, I'd just like to give a shout out to Matt Lateral. He's a local metal mate of ours in Minnesota. Uh, he made this awesome new intro for our Wolveswood program. So just like to give him a shout out and uh, check out his info in the description. Hope you like it, guys. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of The Wolveswood. Today I'm joined again by Cameron, Mr. Stark. Hello, Mr. Ryan. Uh, we got kind of a special episode. There's kind of been a drought of new packs, and we're kind of itching to record another episode of this show. So we're going to do something interesting here. Do you want to explain what we're doing? Yeah, we want to we all want to talk about some cards again. So here we are. Um, so yeah, basically what we're going to be doing is, uh, for this episode, going back to the core set and... Uh, Ryan and I have both picked 10 cards each uh, that we feel like are worth discussing. Um, so we're going to be going over some cards and uh, talk about why we feel like they need to be readdressed. So. All right. Uh, I'm going to start off with a Lannister card, and it's not one of the big Lannister cards. I don't think it's played that much. Uh, I'm going to start with the Queen's Assassin. Okay. This is a card that when it was first released, I thought it was garbage. When is it? It's the you're gonna pay four gold to ambush somebody in. You're probably not gonna be able to target target anyone. But then first snow came out, and to me this character started becoming bonkers. You could really wipe their board. But now it's I think it's almost gone back to where everyone's running a heavy four and five cost character meta. Where the char- I've noticed in my games that the character's not really impacting it anymore because the first snow isn't really getting them down to those two key three key characters where you so- can board wipe them. So you feel like the card is kind of going back to where it was? Yes. Okay. Uh, to me, it was a useless card, then a really good card, and then now it's kind of in between that really good and useless. I could see that, because I, I feel like even people who don't play First Snow are are now, hopefully by by now, um, have adjusted to this meta, which is heavy uh, First Snow, and kind of play that way. So I, I could definitely see that. Um, do you, do you feel like this card will have a future at some point, or is, has it kind of seen its days? Uh, I think with Valor, it can be extremely nasty. Like, if you have, if you can have that four gold out on a Valor turn, you could wipe their one character that they saved. But then again, having that four gold could be difficult, but when you're playing Lannister, if you just had that Tywin duped out on that Valor, or you just had the economy out. But I could, it's the, the fact that I'm glad he's loyal, so you can't put things like him in the Arbor, together sure. to get a bunch of money yeah but i yeah. I, I don't know I, i'm i was really happy that i could be playing him again and then now it really feels like he's a dead card in my deck again sure yeah we'll, but, we'll see where it goes i feel like you don't you're probably not gonna play him without Tyrion on the board to generate that gold for you yes Just, he's pretty key yeah to that. so maybe one of you know like now or later on when valor hits but yeah any any other thoughts on this ryan uh, no, no. I know you don't play Lannister quite as extensively as other people, but... Well, once once everyone started playing Lannister, I kind of, yeah, I hit the brakes on that. So. Yeah. All right, well, what's one of your cards? All right, my first card is uh, a Baratheon card. It's a character. It's Stannis Baratheon. Uh, I feel like this card needs to be discussed because I feel like it's criminally underplayed. Um, when I look at Baratheon decks on Thrones DB or even uh, ones that tend to do pretty well in tournaments... I don't happen to see Stannis very often. I don't know if it's just me, but... Um, and I feel like that's probably a mistake because Stannis, to me, when I face Baratheon decks that play him, are what... That's like he is what crushes me, essentially. He keeps that Neil permanent, and that's very hard to overcome if you are not are unable to deal with him or, you know, are unable to somehow stand your characters back up. So... Um, Ryan, what do you think about Stannis? Uh, criminally underplayed is exactly how I'd put him. Um, to me, he is the... you got to build around him, but he is the best Baratheon character. I think it's kind of Nedley how Robert's the seven-coster, and you look at him and he's huge, but he almost needs his brother to be really good. Yeah. I mean, Robert's flashy, right? He's got the Intimidate, Renown, he likes the Neil guys, and, and you know, there's no doubt that Robert's a great card. But Stannis, being able to keep those characters down, is just so gross. 
and that I don't even think uh, an effect like that existed in first edition, right? No. See, the thing about first edition is Lannister was a kneel, and you could kneel out their whole board, but then next turn they get a fresh start and they could stand them up. So it wasn't as impactful to kneel out everything. Um, I when I was playing Greyjoy Fealty for the kind of like the regional season, and he was the key piece you need out. Like Mel, Mel helps him. Robert, Robert only is good when you have him out because I think he's really strong. But yeah, he's the key piece you need to draw. And I think uh, Baratheon's actually criminally underplayed itself too. It, it's kind of come back and got shamed away again. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little odd. A lot of people are, um, I mean, of course, Lannister's still getting played just as much as it has been. But, you know, a lot of people are getting into Stark finally. And um, Martell is seeing more play. But yeah, Barra is, it's a little odd to me that it doesn't see more play than it does lately. But maybe we'll see that change. Um, isn't there a new Stannis coming out in the first pack of the second cycle? I can neither confirm or deny <laughs> that there's a Stannis coming out in the next cycle. Well, um, I, I believe there is. I thought that was spoiled in the article, but we'll see. Um, that'll be interesting to see what he looks like. Um, Ryan, your next card. Um, mine's going to be a plot, and it's a neutral one. Well, obviously, corset, but uh, Feast for Crows. This wasn't something I was thinking about putting on this list until I was actually, before this episode, was going through everything. I think this is plot's underplayed. Sure, it has four reserve. Sure, it only has one initiative. But it gives you that six gold, and it can give you two extra power. Like, it's an obvious no-brainer in, like, the Baratheon dominance type type deck. But it's a solid economy plot. And I don't think four, gold, four reserve is that horrible as it sounds, especially if you're getting six gold yeah. and possibly two power that turn. It, re- it changes the entire round, because your opponent might do something completely different just to stop you from getting two power. Um, there's a similar card to this uh, called Winter, Winter Festival, right? That's coming out really soon with yes. the seasons, right? Uh, you just get two power for get, being the, having to be winner, I think, when it's revealed. If, if there isn't a summer plot. Uh, yeah, if there's yeah. A, yeah. I think it's like at the end of the challenges phase or something. So it's kind of the, a similar kind of effect. Um, but you're right. Um, Feast for Crows, it's a solid plot. Um, it's interesting that four reserve and six gold are kind of um, almost, uh, I don't know, they're at ends with each other like it's it's like i don't want to open with that because then i'm going to be down to four cards no you would never you know what i mean yeah but the six gold is you know you can't deny that that's nice to have so it's a it's usually apply your not gonna play first turn and maybe in the middle of the game just or even late game to try to like seal the deal but, but yeah uh you're not wrong it's a it's a, it's a good plot and, and i don't i haven't seen it played in quite a while actually no i it's like i only see it and usually nice watch or like a baratheon dominance deck kind of yeah archetype but, so probably a little underplayed. Yeah, I don't know. It just popped out to me. Uh, what's your next card? My next card is a neutral event, Tears of Lease. Yep, I That's went horrible. there. That's horrible. That's a horrible card. <laughs> I went there. Um, <laughs> it, well, I can't really say it's underplayed or overplayed. I think it's kind of just broken, um, which is why it, why I included it on my list. There seems to be like a new uh, rule or an exception for this card like every month because it you know, conflicts with normal thinking, like uh, Drown God's Blessing, where it's like, oh, well, it doesn't really choose that character, so it can still target that oh, character. And I was so like, excited for that attachment, yeah. and then I'm just like, oh, no, it's garbage, because yeah. Tears. And Until, I hope Tears gets an errata. I think it will at some point. Yeah, and Tears has always been kind of kind of too easy to trigger. Like, would it have killed it to, you know, be another win by five condition, you know, or uh, not able to target armies, for example. You know, there's all these, like, different ways you could have tweaked tiers to make it, like, not so good. And also, uh, it's got this, like, wonky timing where it doesn't, like, work with, like, Wonderful Crips if one of your star characters is killed. Sorry. Like, tiers is just another exception to that card. So it's just this really weird, janky, like, fucking... <laughs> Excuse me, but wall of text effect that I'm just not a big fan of at all. It shouldn't have been able to target armies, and it shouldn't have been able to target characters. I think it should have been printed. I think it's really frustrating to have a character with an intrigue icon, and then a card like Nymeria is just like, nope, I'll take your intrigue icon and then poison you, because now you don't have one. <laughs> yeah. So, And the fact that everything else, even like the one that removes locations, the event, put to, put to the torch, right. it has a stipulation. It doesn't just say, win a challenge. Yeah. And it's, I actually am really disappointed that they just put it on a character and left it the same Yeah, exactly way. the same, which is probably their way of telling us that it's probably not going to change, which kind of sucks because it's a really annoying card. 
just wait an event's probably gonna come out that's like remove a poison token and no one will play it because it's like that's, a, that's all they'll probably do but, yeah it's gonna be a neutral event <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna cost two gold all right uh, go ahead. Uh, my next card I want to talk about on my list is Illyrio. Um, I think when he first came out, he was played just because you had to fill up your deck and a Targ Fealty. He was nice when you had him. Sure, he could always work with Tyrion, but right now I think he's at his his highest potential, especially in a Targ, uh, or a, sorry, a Lannister Banner of the Dragon deck, where you can stand things like Miri Mazdur and Tyrion is just funneling in that money in to stand your Tywin every turn. It I have play, played a few games on our Tuesday nights where someone has that going, and if the, him and Tyrion are out, it is just gross to do that. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, even in the target deck now, if, if you are maybe writing more economy plots to afford his trigger, then if you have Miri on the board, that just changes things dramatically if your uh, opponent's characters are vulnerable. Um, do you feel like he's more than one of? Yeah, in the, in that deck. in that I'm talking about a specific deck. Yes, I would run two of him. Um, just because he combos so well with yeah. Tywin and um, Tyrion. I, f- I feel like initially people were kind of down on Illyrio and and his his ability, but I feel like two gold was the right cost for that effect. And a certain seven cost character <laughs> that has hard to kill built in came right. out. Because I've had matches where she I have don't have much intrigue out. She does her intrigue. I kill someone. She kills someone. She stands her. Now I can't also win that power challenge because he just stood her up and she kills another character. Yeah. It's just and then you do your mill. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty specific combo. Sure. But it's like when it, it it can be gross even if it's just standing up a Tywin and being like, oh, now he's standing up. Your yeah. turn. But, no doubt, I agree. All right, uh, my next card is put to the torch. Uh, you actually mm. mentioned it when we were talking about tears of lease, but. Um, yeah, I feel like this card has been binder fodder from the beginning, which is kind of a shame, and I feel like it still is. Um, it's a shame. It, I don't think it either should have had the strength requirement, or it should have, or keep it the same, but also allow for discarding attachments. That would be played right now if it could target dis- oh, attachments yeah. too. And I feel like that would have been a great thing for this meta right now because attachments are so rampant, and and because of that, confiscation is like auto include for pretty, pretty much pretty much everyone, which is a shame. So I feel like had this card been printed with the ability to also discard attachments. Uh, maybe people would be playing this and confiscation wouldn't be so rampant and annoying. <laughs> I also don't like the fact that it has a stipulation to blow up a location, that you want to win a military by fire more strength. When a, when getting rid of a character is so much more powerful, like the Tears of Lace we were talking about, yeah. and that requires just winning a challenge. Yeah. I actually wouldn't have mind if this was just win a military. I know that would have seemed huge. Maybe you would have a cost restriction on it, but... Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah, I've tried playing this card, like not recently, but I've tried. And every time I try to play it, my opponent go in their head goes, "Oh, he must have put to the sword, so I'm gonna stop this." <laughs> and it's just like, no, all I want to do is blow up your wall, yeah. so stop what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. If you if you put all these these, these uh, three events side by side and just look at them, you just kind of scratch your head and it's like, man, this could have been done a little bit better. But Ryan, what's your next card? Ah, uh, rattle shirt. Uh, excuse me, rattle shirt raiders. Ah. Uh, this card was a ho hum card when it first came out. People maybe ran one, but probably didn't. Um, but right now, it's just necessary. I think it's necessary to run at least one of this guy, especially with the Martell attachment junk that's coming out. Um, yeah, I, I've been, I've been very tempted to slot him at least a one of into almost all of my decks, just because Martell's icon att- attachments are so disgusting. And for Snow. Yeah, Helps and yeah, bit. he's it four cost. Yeah, um, he's not like amazing, but it's just nice to have that utility in your deck, you know. And and when you see him, when you need him, it's it's a good thing. It's so. like getting to the point where you need at least two ways to get rid of attachments. So sometimes your deck can't just rely on that. On the confiscation. one time, we need yeah. a we need a, a new neutral attachment control. That's not this character. I mean, he's fine, but I don't know. Yeah, there needs to be a little bit more. Um, all right, my next card is Milk of the Poppy. Um, That's I... one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Well, well we can yeah. just talk it all out. Uh, so <sighs> this card was interesting because I, I can feel like we can say this, that we were playtesters for the core set. I mean, our, name, yep. our names are in the book or whatever. But um, I feel like I remember there being a discussion about how much this card sh- should cost, and I feel like there was an argument that it could have been two gold, right? Yes. Um, but it w- But it's one, and... I feel like it's fine at one, 
although maybe a little too <laughs> too played because it's so cost effective because if you think about it i'm not saying that that's a problem but there's a reason why milk of the poppy is in almost every deck because if you compare this game to the first edition the big the big characters just cost more and they have bigger effects so the one goal that you're getting with uh, milk of the poppy and the effect that you're getting is just a lot more bang for your buck than what you were doing in first edition uh, you're blanking a six or seven gold investment versus maybe a three or four in first edition. Uh, so just that in and of itself is is a pretty big uh, gain. Um, so yeah, I feel like this this is a, a great card. Um, I don't think it's broken. Um, probably sees the right amount of play. I mean, do you feel like it's problematic at all? Or? Uh, the only frustration is they okay. want the game to be about seven cost important, six cost main characters, and you just invested that much money in them which is fine, but then your opponent invests one goal and you might be out of luck and you might have already played your confiscation. Yeah. But again, I think that would be completely fine if there was more attachment control yep. in the game. It goes back to that argument about the attachment control. Because to me, uh, Melk makes other attachments better, though, because I feel like if you're running any attachment, like a seal of the hand or something like that, you also run the Melks because when you, if you have more than one type of attachment, your opponent's going to use it on that Melk, and then it's like, no, I got the seal yeah. of the hand on Tywin for the rest of the game yeah. now. Yeah, it's a way to kind of bait your opponent into using their confiscation. Um, you'd, be, you'd be like, oh, well, now your Tyrion's milked, and and they're like, oh, I'm going to get rid of that, and then, boom, you play your seal of the hand or your ice the next round, and then they're just kind of screwed, and they're going to have to deal with that card um, unless they're playing rat rattle shirts or something else. So... Yeah, it's a great card. Um, uh, it's a much better value than its first first edition counterpart. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm always finding myself kind of putting it back in my decks lately. So, all right. Um, yeah, I've known that. that's all I have to say about that. Right. That's the right on man. You said it all. So you're up, uh, Doran. Uh, I've never understood the, the... It's not the best six-coster, but I've never understood the crap this card gets. I felt like I agreed when it came to Targ Fealty being everywhere, and it's like, oh, he just gets your cars. It's like, okay, that's fine when you're in that one matchup. But I've been playing him now. I only play one copy, but he's decent. He draws me a card. He makes Quentin be able to kill almost anyone when he dies, which is huge. And... Uh, this helps with the Viper out too, and now we're gonna get Harmon Oler, which got spoiled, and he's he's gonna get the plus strength edition. I I mean it stinks that he doesn't also boost himself, but I think he's he's a decent six class character that people uh, crap on and don't even yeah. include in their decks anymore. He's certainly better in, in crossing when you're trying to go for those like big pitch challenges with the Viper, and and if you have Doran out and you have a bunch of like use plots, then you're looking at some absurd numbers if the Viper is doing his thing. Um, but no, you're right. I think, you know, if you're playing Fealty or something, sure, he's, he can be a, a, a solid one of. Um, certainly on the lower end of the six, co six costers, probably uh, next to Queen of Thorns, but, and Jon Snow. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, you're right. He's solid. He's got insight, and that's almost enough. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, not much to say about that card. Just, I think he's unfairly treated. He's comparatively, he's not the best, but. I think he's a solid one of in Martell deck right now, especially I, Fealty. I agree. Uh, my next card is Winter is Coming. Um, so I feel like uh, I've been thinking about this card a lot. Um, and back in the, again, sorry to talk about First Edition so much, but you know, a lot of these cards are reprints. So, um, But this card was also in First Edition, and I didn't tend to play this card in First Edition. Um, but I thought, I thought about it, and I'm like, well, why is that? Well, again... Characters cost more in second edition, so if you're using uh, Winter is Coming to kill off one of their five, six, or even seven cost characters, again, that's like one gold for a huge swing into your favor. Um, so in first edition, you'd probably be killing like a zero cost character. Yeah, exactly. It's so like, yeah. it's just a it's, a it's a different game, and this card has gone up in value. Um, and yeah, I mean, what do you think about this card? Uh, I built I've built a few <laughs> start decks that are like character heavy where i'm running almost no events and i'm just trying to run a bunch of duplicates and a bunch of characters and this event still makes it in my deck even if i have no events i'm going to run two or three of this event yeah um with this card got even better with first snow it you always think about the kill with this but even i've used it on power and intrigue yeah. i've used it on intrigue quite a bit actually 
it's, but and it's flexible like that like say you can't wipe out your opponent's board ideally well yeah use it on the power challenge if you have enough like renowned characters on the board you'd win the game with this card too or yeah even intrigue and I, is it their best event still i'm trying to think of all their events it's yeah probably their best it event. Is. it's just flexible it's never really a bad card that you want to see um the only downside to this card is that you kind of have to use it before you know you've won the challenge for sure because you it's an action right so you use it after your yes typically after your uh your opponent's defend defend the challenge or not um and then they can take an action so they could still like ambush like widow's will or a character like um, they could play in the name of your king or whatever. They could still screw you over, which sucks. But, um, but yeah, it's it's regardless, it's a really really good card. Well, you have three for the Nars in your hand, just ready in case they try <laughs> to throw in anything. Around. Yeah, I don't include every Stark deck, right? Uh, yeah, let's go to another Stark card, um, Sansa. <laughs> now this is kind of branching over into the expansions, which we're going to touch on in a later video. But to me. She's got. She's still a good character, but she's gone down with that new Sansa and the new okay. First Snow. What? I'll let you start with this because so you're a Stark guy. Just to clarify, this is on your list. Yes, this okay. is on my list. All right. Uh, you want my thoughts on her? Yeah, because to me, she's not as good. But okay. I know you feel a little different, so well, I wanted to hear. About I think that. she's great, uh, but I do feel like her. Um, she has come down in uh, value because of First Snow. Um, if you don't have her duped or if you don't have a way to save her in some other means, then her ability isn't going to do you much good. So I feel like it's kind of, I don't know. And the, and the other thing is right now, the other Sansa, she costs two and she's loyal. So sometimes she costs one and she comes in standing at four strength, and which she is comes ridiculous. In standing. Yeah. I mean, and sure there's been times where the, the new Sansa for me has just been like one or even zero strength. And it's like, Oh, you're just kind of there. But, uh, more often than not, she's like four, five, six, and the seven. Helps yeah. that one more than it, it helps the. She can get kind yeah. of absurd, and but um, but yeah, I mean, I th I still feel like the core Sansa is still a solid card. I feel like she would still be seeing play if the new Sansa. I mean, she probably still sees the some one play, thing I like too is but... one is loyal and one isn't. So if you're bannering with Stark, you don't get that two cost yeah. Sansa. You get, <clears throat> which I think houses like Night's Watch would rather have mm -hmm. one that stands and gains them power. Yeah, I feel like they're both still good choices um lately though i have been kind of playing the wolves of the north sansa a bit more all right yeah just thought i'd bring that up <laughs> that's it <laughs> yeah you that's just wanted it. me to talk about it yeah all right. i wanted to hear what you thought about all right it. all right <laughs> the sansa situation all right um <laughs> so my next card is another baratheon card oh god chamber of the painted table <laughs> <laughs> i win oh yep <laughs> So yeah, I hate I hate these combo decks second win without doing any challenges. And Ryan, I think you built a, a we've deck we've that... had games where like I don't even realize until like a couple plots in, I'm like, oh wait, I don't have to do anything. Yeah. I just win at this point. Like I can just stop doing challenges and be, and just get outpower yeah. my opponent. So decks that um, exploit that kind of play, if you want to call it that, um, <laughs> it's really this card's fault. Like this is really the card that makes that even possible. Because just being able to take one power and gaining one, it, that's just like a huge swing. Like that can just not only keep in the game, but just help you win the game. Like you can defend out. every challenge, but lose one. Have your opponent get one power from that, and you go, that meant nothing. Give it back to me. Yeah. It's pretty gross. I mean, I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I want to play Game of Thrones, not Game of Dominance. That's, that's just me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I want to do challenges, and I want to have challenges matter. I mean, that's, that's why there's icons, right? That's why we have characters and claim and all that crap. Like, and strength like that's that's the heart of the game and See, when you I, have when you have cards like this that kind of be, that give you a completely different way to win the game that's to me it's just not really playing the game See, I, I don't like how it has how a win condition is helping you win even more i i don't know what the best way to put that is but i like like the one the armory where it's like i win dominance i draw one card yeah. Well, like, like the, to me, that's helping me for future rounds. It's not just stacking It's rewarding power. you for winning Dominance, which is already a thing that can get you power. But it's not like, it's not, you know, directly helping you win the game. And it's so, I, I can't tell you how many games I've played where it's like, I have Gendry out, I have this out, I have the Iron Throne, and I have Feast for Crows, which yeah. he's brought up. And it's just like, I get a ton of power for doing absolutely nothing yep. that turn. Just crossing your arms. And with Baratheon, you can even just win... A power challenge and just that's all you need to do that turn and yep. then just win dominance and it, it can be gross stannis really helps this card get annoying and yep. stupid because the fireley flowers are they're they're like probably one of the best three costs not unique if not the best yeah 
And they, there's just so many cards that help with this one location. I mean, it's it's a good card, and but I hate it, and that's why I wanted to bring it up. <laughs> so, all right. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about another neutral plot. Uh, Naval Superiority. Okay. This is a plot that I think is going to fade away with all the winter stuff coming out that only has winter, uh, sorry, season. Oh, it says all these winter and s- summer. And I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know if I'm, I kind of like the card because it keeps people honest. You can't just start Pentoshi every turn. And, like uh, Tim, who just won our um, spring tournament, um, he won every game, but there's that one game he lost because he opened Pentoshi and, and he, he got, got naval. naval. Yeah. And I just, and uh, Evan, who uh, works for FFG, was playing. He just opened naval almost every single game, and it hit, I think, every single time, <laughs> yeah. except for maybe once. Yeah. So it's still good, but I'm thinking it's going to f- fade away to yeah. nothingness once all these seasons come out. And I wish those seasons had the kingdom and edict traits, not just the season on them. Yeah. The uh, the other thing, what is it, Summer Harvest, that gives you uh, two more gold, right, <laughs> yeah. in your opponent? That's just a summer plot, right? And that's going to be the automatic opener for yeah. 90% of summer decks. And that's completely safe from Naval. It's like, it's another, like, between that and Calm Over Westeros and, like, you know, you already have, I mean, even Noble Cause and Calling the Banners are decent openers that can kind of get around the Naval. They get hit, but you're still getting gold or you can still play a cheap Lord or Lady with those plots. So I think you're right. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. I feel like Naval should have been a plot that was just always a thing that could hit any plot. You know what I mean? Like, You'd have to change it, it but... I, I would have really loved it if it was zero gold and just gave all plots zero gold. Yeah. Like, that would have been fine. Or even just one gold. Like, make it one gold and be like, all your opponent's plots are zero or something yes. like that. That's fine. Like, there's... I, I mean, I like that they're trying to mess with the traits more, but I feel like they're kind of dropping the ball with not uh, keeping this thing going, which is unfortunate. Because um, if that... If that pretty much sees no play, then that basically means, oh, Pintoshi, everyone, like, who gives a crap? Like, it's, it's stupid. Yep. It's pretty much already there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my next card is a neutral attachment. Yep. Uh, Little Bird. <laughs> oh. Um, the reason why I included this is because uh, I feel like we're at the point in the game now where I, I think this card is over overplayed. Um, we're getting to the point, at least in my opinion, where the card slots are at a premium. premium, And uh, I myself am finding uh, cutting cards like this out of my decks just to uh, really make room for cards that have a higher impact. Um, simply gaining one icon on one character just isn't really doing a whole lot for your, your overall like strategy, I guess. Um, I mean, the icon is nice to have to stop tears and stuff like that, but I mean, other cards are nice too. <laughs> and, you know, so be it if my deck is a little light on the intrigue at this point, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to do my thing, I guess. And now uh, a lot of houses have more, like Stark has plenty more intrigue now than they did at the start. And they have things like the cat, the Winterfell to stop. And things Catelyn, like Tears yeah. and Catelyn. Um, yeah, I think Stark was the only house from my memory that I ever played that attachment Little in. Bird. I can't think of well, any other house. Greyjoy. Maybe I did in Tyrell. Yeah. Just because just things Randall, like Maester, Maester whatever his face is, you won't play that character so you're like light on intrigue maybe but yeah yeah um i don't know much to say about the attachment i think you're right i think those were a core set meta cards Mm -hmm. that they're not tears is the only reason to play this now if you have no answers to tears i guess you might want to play this to protect your big characters but i think a lot of the best characters right now have intrigue icons sure but all right Uh, i've got another (laughs) plot uh wildfire um I don't have much to say. I just kind of want to hear your thoughts on it. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's I, I have my thoughts too, but it's just, I went away from <clears throat> just doing First Snow, and then now I find myself going back to Wildfire and really? like slowly moving away from First Snow. Because my First Snows have been doing next to nothing against Because my everyone is kind of playing around it. Yeah, right? whereas my Wildfire actually brings the board down. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm doing something really weird right now in my Lancer deck. I'm running two wildfires and a first snow. I'm trying something really <laughs> like keep the board down to like yeah. those three good Lancer characters I constantly have. But sure. um, I don't know. Where do you think wildfire is at versus the core when the core came out? Well, uh, you know, there's plenty of decks that don't play wildfire and and some that don't even play either that or first snow. There's some decks that just don't have a reset, which I feel like is a mistake. Um, because you are going to have games where you're behind and you need something to kind of help you catch up. Um, I still play it. Uh, 
I don't love it, but it's just, it's a nice little like, oh shit button, you know, once things get out of hand. And it's, it's also nice to kind of keep people in check. You know, it's like we were talking about Pintoshi being so rampant. If your opponent like shits out their whole board, well, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to keep you in check and wildfire your ass the next mm -hmm. round. Um, yeah, uh, I'm still a fan. The It still has great stats. Uh, isn't hit by Nabal. It's a scheme in a war, right? Yes. Um, and it kills characters, so that's always good. Um, it's a solid plot. And its stats are really good. Yeah. So, I'm a fan. All right. Uh, my next card is Burn Men, the Lannister character. <laughs> that's two cost character in the game. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of touch on this a little bit and get your thoughts, but still a really uh, great card that got way better once first snow came out um it's ridiculously valuable um it can it can often just do like do a surprise military challenge on its own um and really screw over your opponent or simply keep your big guys big guys safe from like a march to the wall uh yeah i'm gonna sneak that in my list as my number 11 is march to the wall that literally seems like it's almost in every single if your deck is has any sort of target kill on it that plot is just automatically in there um, that's like what the burn men literally are. They're just march, march fodder. fodder yeah. yeah, it's like you. They're, that's or claim fodder, right? Because like if you if Sometimes, you only have like yeah. two or three big bomb characters, and your opponent's like, oh shit, yeah, here's my mill challenge, eat it. And there's like, oh, burn men. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But even then, it's like then it's just so predictable because then the march will come after that turn. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I I I agree they are military fodder, but. I would say about 70% of the time, my burn men are just there to either for me to march my opponent and they lose something and I don't. Yeah. Or they're just so they can't play their march. You still play three, right? And you're, oh, yeah. yeah. He, he literally is the best. I don't think there's a better two cast character. Bran, Bran, maybe Bran, that's it. But the fact that he's not unique Sansa? puts him higher. <laughs> yeah. The fact that, yeah, it's yeah. really gross. And Tyrion can just pay for them. Sure. But yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a good fit for that house. Uh, my last card's kind of a fun card, so I'm gonna let save mine for last. I want to hear your next one. Uh, well, I have two more. Okay, go ahead. We'll, we'll do mine last. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, because we had a, a double, right? Or yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, so my next card is a neutral plot. Uh, my only plot on this list, I believe. Uh, Calm over Westeros. Um, <clears throat> so I have. It's a bit of a controversial opinion here, but I, I feel like this card is a little overplayed. Way overplayed, I think. <laughs> I, I think it's way overplayed. I mean, like, I really, personally, I really like utility plots. I like plots that kill characters <clears throat> or, you know, march to the wall or uh, summons or counting coppers. I like plots that do something, you know, have some kind of, like, if, you know, tangible effect. This card, yes, it can protect your board, it can protect your hand, protect your power, but it reduces the claim on one challenge, and it's I feel like, like that never does anything as people <laughs> open it. To me, this is a plot that you play three quarters into your game, and you're like, I have a decent amount of gold. I'm going to stop that power challenge so my opponent can't win the game next yeah. turn. But I, I, whenever I see my opponent open this as their first plot, I don't know why, but it always annoys me. And it's not even because it's like stopping me from doing anything. It's just like... I look at that and I'm like, that that does that did nothing. <laughs> like it's just sitting there, and you got five gold, and you could have just played yeah, a noble, noble cause, cause right? or Pentoshi or anything, just a search. I don't know. And then my opponent always names it that challenge, and then it just never does anything. I yeah. feel like it's a mid game. Well, I don't want to get my important character killed in a military challenge because I can't put as many dudes out, or I want to stop my opponent from getting much power. Well, and a lot of times when you open with the two, you're not really sure what you should say as far as like what I want to reduce because you'll look at your opponent's board and they have a marshal yet, obviously, and you're like, well, uh, I guess mill. Even though like you might have the more military icons on the board <clears throat> or something like that, that might not even be a threat to you. But yeah, so it's kind of a gamble and it's kind of just like a plot that's very vanilla. It's not going to go away either because it's summer <laughs> traded, so that's going to be every single summer deck because it's a decent plot. Although if people are including this just to have that... Um, naval proof plot maybe they will start playing the other uh season plots instead of this one so i don't know it could go either way um but yeah overall i feel like it's overplayed um and you have one more yeah but i want to save, save it yeah, okay. i want to save it all right so my last one <coughs> is uh lannister character oh uh, lannister. yep but uh you're not <laughs> all right it's a uh, lannisport money lender um <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The reason why <laughs> it's on my list is because somehow I still see this card being played. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, even before First Snow, I saw this card, and well, and that's fine. But like, now even after First Snow, it's like, 
people are still playing it. I'm like, why are you playing that card? Like, it's it's a personal meta. That card is not even probably when he give you that one goal and it's, it's gonna time. die immediately yeah it's like when you lose a military that character just yeah. dies <laughs> it does nothing you're not gonna use your dupe off of Tyrion or tywin like you're not gonna kill a better character you're gonna kill this guy <laughs> <laughs> and he's fucking limited the only house i can think of maybe playing them is if you're like night's watch <laughs> banner into lannister maybe like you just need some sort of economy i mean i'd rather just play higher gold plots though yeah, yeah. it's just i mean you have he has one icon too, and he's limited. And yeah. he's the icon you need the less of, like yeah. in the last deck. Like they don't care; they already have plenty of intrigue icons. So yeah, I mean, you already have what's the um, the one where you can put the the money on him to make him bigger, the newer army. Oh, red cloaks. So you have red cloaks. They're like you, the second best. Yeah, to you cast have red cloaks. You have tickler. You have burnman. You have way. You have uh, dude. You have other options for the two costs for Lancer. I would play any neutral two cost <laughs> character over yeah. them too. The, the house maesters are great. Like, play those guys instead. Or the stealth. Oh, the stealth wildlings. Yeah, the, the wildlings. Yeah. Good God. If you have this in your deck. He has the same icons and he isn't <laughs> limited and he grants stealth. It's like... Take hey. this out of your decks. I'm tired of seeing him. Yeah. Ugh. All right. I'm going to sneak another one in. You made me think of another one. Um... The Lannis, Lannis, the Lannis port, the Lannis port drawing one. The Lan is it just Lannis port, right? Well, the one that draws let's one. Let's just continue off of the money lender. That's fine. You can just mention it. Yeah. The... I don't play that anymore. I don't. Lannisport? Yeah, it's too expensive, especially if you're not playing Fealty, mm -hmm. and it doesn't do enough. Um, There's and the fact that Lannister keeps getting all these three cost locations that are blah, that are worse than that. I think. I think Small Council is worse than that, and I think well, maybe not <clears throat> the Tower of the Hand. That's about on par. That can be do more powerful things, but it's hard to get that going. But yeah, I, I just don't include that anymore so even in fealty i don't include that location um, i mean I, I haven't been playing lancer much i i just kind of um redesigned my deck lately and and i have one copy just because i feel like if it's if i know you're right it's like a three cost location it's, it's expensive and by it being just one copy if i if i can't afford it that's not that big of a deal it's not like I, it's one card in my deck so if i can't afford it one dead card is not gonna hopefully ruin my day yeah. so all right so here's the last card i was saving the wolves would. Uh, Aww, this is this is a card that was pretty uh, crap when it came out, and I thought for the box it could maybe be playable. It is still not playable whatsoever. It's this card needed another effect. It needed to do more. It needed to I don't know like maybe cost more and give direwolves plus one i don't know like or give them an uh, give them icons i don't know they need i think it's really down how dragons can have icons wolves direwolves will never be playable if they cannot have other icons or give or maybe reduce uh this also would have been a good idea reduce the first direwolf you play by one or something like that that could have been cool like a brandon's gift for direwolves well i mean yeah. in a direwolf deck you'd play that it's just unfortunate because i don't think direwolves will ever be a thing and they were never a thing in first edition well they're I will say, though, that, I mean, some Darewolves you still play. You like, can do an attachment in Darewolf deck. When no, you, but like, Lady, yeah. Shaggy Dog is, is being played. Summer's being played. I think will always be played. Grey Wind is being played. Like, those Darewolves are being played. A problem when with those, a lot of those cards are loyal, so you want to fealty them. You don't want to pay the extra money. And this should have been like the Harmon <clears throat> Ulber, where it's like you can ambush them in for minus one gold. Like, that does, seems a little strong, but <clears throat> the other guy does it for Sand Snakes. I mean, sure. you're paying more for it, but... No, you're know. right. This card is not good. Um, I don't know. I've been. I even tried it. I tried it when that box came out, and I just didn't do anything. I've been so itching to make a there. stupid direwolf deck for a while, so maybe I'll do it and just try one and see how it goes. But yeah, as silly as it sounds, I think Lightworm Rain's actually really good right now. What's that? Lightworm Rain. It's actually really decent right now. Oh, you yeah. can, if you have the deck that can play it. Yeah. Just because of things like me. I, I almost, I almost had that on my list, just because like it's. Yeah, like we're in, it's a still a really good card, but I'm really glad it's Darewolf character. If that card would have been attachment, it, it might have been too good. <laughs> it was just like, oh, I'll kneel that lady on there. Ooh, that would have been good. But all right, uh, that's it for uh, this episode of the Wolveswood. We're gonna have another episode, maybe in a week or a few days, where we're gonna go yeah. through all the kind of like all the pack the chapter packs plus throw in the Stark box. Yeah, the first Same cycle, thing. the Westeros cycle, right? Yeah, and, oh. and I, I couldn't get my list down to 10, so it's gonna be, it's spilling over oh, a little bit. Yeah. So hopefully uh, you have a couple copies being cross over. But. Um, let us know what you guys thought of this, and if you like it, um, we'll keep doing it. And if you don't, 
Oh well, <laughs> we did it. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, Rob St. John, you better come to Worlds this year. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen, but <laughs> we'll see. Winner's coming. All right. Thanks, guys. Would you like to test it? Test. Test. Meow. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the. Hey guys, welcome to the Wolveswood. We got kind of a special episode here. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the Starks of Winterfell trace their descent to the first men in the Age of Heroes. The family's founder was Brandon the Builder, who, in the aftermath of the Long Night, helped establish the Night's Watch. He went on to build the ancestral seat of Winterfell and reigned as the first king in the north. Much like their sigil, the Grey Direwolf, how stark is the stuff of legend in the north and throughout the Seven Kingdoms? And their family words, winter, winter is coming, coming. serve as a reminder, a reminder of their, their beginnings, beginnings in the wake of the long night and a grim portent of things to come.